Anyangu, I brought you some food. You should eat this instead. It's much tastier. Anyangu, feeling a bit better that day, declined kindly. Thank you, Odira. But I already made my food. I will eat this later. Not wanting to raise suspicion, Odira hesitated but eventually left the poisoned meal and departed, unable to make Anyangu eat it. Later that evening, Anyangu went to retrieve the food Odira had brought. As she uncovered it, she noticed that the meal had turned black, a clear sign of poison. Shocked and alarmed, she immediately threw the food away, understanding the dead intent behind the offering. In a village called Anienu, something very strange happened. A beautiful girl named Anyangu arrived. She was so pretty that all the important men in the village couldn't help but notice her. People didn't know where she came from. They said different things. Maybe she came from the forest or even from the sky. Anyangu was so lovely that no man could pass without looking back at her. But some people felt worried about her. They thought she might have come to cause trouble and destroy the village. The girl quickly became very popular among the rich people in the village. They all wanted her to like them. But some villagers thought she had a secret plan to harm their village. The elders in the village talked about an old story. It was about a beautiful lady who was supposed to come and bring bad things to the village. A few villagers wanted to find out if this new girl, Anyangu, was that lady. The people in the village were split between thinking she was just really beautiful and charming and others who thought she might bring trouble. The village was caught in the middle, not sure what might happen next. In the days that followed, the beautiful girl Ayanwu continued to capture everyone's attention in the village of Anienu. Her charm was so strong that the women folk began to feel jealous and unhappy. They whispered among themselves, trying to figure out a way to make her leave. Anyangu's presence made the other women feel less important. They felt like no one noticed them anymore because everyone's eyes were on her. Some women thought that if she left, things would go back to how they used to be, with everyone getting attention equally. Whispers filled the air as the women shared ideas on how to make Anyangu go away. Some thought of spreading rumors or making her feel unwelcome, hoping she would choose to leave on her own. The village, once united in curiosity about the mysterious girl, was not divided. Some people were fascinated by Anyangu's beauty, while others were getting more and more bothered by it. The situation in Aninu was changing, with feelings of envy and unhappiness growing among the women. They were trying to find a way to remove the enchanting girl from their village, hoping to bring back the harmony they felt they had lost. As the whispers and unhappiness grew among the women of the village of Anienu, they decided to take action. They chose Odira, a young woman known for her cleverness, to befriend Anyangu. They hoped Odira would gather information about the mysterious girl that could help send her away. Odira approached Ayang one day while she was gathering water from the village well. Hello Ayang, I'm Odira. I have seen you around and I thought we could be friends. Odira said with a warm smile. Ayang looked at Odira with curiosity and nodded. Nice to meet you, Odira. The two started talking, and Odira asked about Ayamu's life and where she came from. Ayamu shared stories about her past, but she didn't reveal much about why she came to Anienu. I love your beautiful clothes. Where did you get them from? Odira inquired, trying to find out more. 
Anya once smiled. I made them myself. It's a skill I learned from my mother. Odira listened carefully, trying to find something that could help the woman make Anyangwu leave. She continued meeting Anyangwu in the following days, asking more questions and trying to learn as much as she could. During one conversation, Anyangwu confided, I have always felt a bit lonely. It's hard to be in a place where people are not so welcoming. Odira's eyes widened, sensing an opportunity. I'm sorry to hear that, but I'm sure things will get better. She said with a sympathetic tone. The women of the village waited for Odira to gather enough information that could help them send Ayam away. Odira returned to the group of women, sharing what she had learned about Ayam. She makes her clothes, and she feels lonely here. Odira revealed. The women thought about how they could use this information to make Ayamu leave. They planned to use Ayamu's loneliness to their advantage, hoping she might decide to leave on her own. The village of Anienu was now caught in a web of plans and secrets, as the women plotted to use Odira's newfound information to change Ayamu's mind about staying in the village. Several weeks passed, but Ayamu showed no sign of leaving the village. Instead, more and more men were drawn to her, even the married ones. Despite her constant rejections, Ayamu worked tirelessly in the fields and helped others earning her own money to take care of herself. It's not right. She's turning everyone's heads. And she doesn't even care about the attention. One of the women muttered angrily to the others. She's so stubborn. We need to do something. Another woman added. They grew more even unhappy with Ayamu's presence and started planning a different way to make her leave. Once again, they chose Odira, hoping she could convince Anyangu to accompany her to a neighboring village. Their plan was to harm her on the way. Anyangu, I have been thinking, I'm going to visit my family in the next village. Would you like to come along? Odira asked, trying to sound friendly. Anyangu looked at Odira, a bit surprised. Why do you want me to come with you? Odira smiled. I thought it might be nice for you to see a new place and get away for a bit. It could be fun, you know. Anyangu hesitated but eventually agreed. Okay, I will come. It might be nice to see a new place. Unaware of the sinister plan, Anyangu agreed to go with Odira. The women had successfully set the trap without Anyangu knowing what awaited her. They had planned to harm her on the way to the neighboring village. Feeling that this was the only way to rid themselves of the enchanting girl. The village was now entrenched in a plot that could bring a tragic end to the mysterious girl as the women's envy and resentment led them down a dark and dangerous path. Anyangu. Unaware of the looming danger, prepared to travel with Odira to the neighboring village the next day. She was getting her things ready, packing a small bag, excited to see a new place. Meanwhile, Odira rushed to deliver the message to her cohorts, the women who had devised the sinister plan. She agreed to come. Tomorrow, we can finally get rid of her. The women were ecstatic, feeling relieved that their plan to remove Anyangu was finally in motion. As the night fell and Anyangu retired to sleep, she was visited in a dream by her deceased mother. Do not venture on any journey, my daughter. It's a trap and you will meet harm if you go. Her mother's voice echoed in the dream. Startled. Anyangu woke up in a cold sweat, her heart pounding. She felt unwell. 
the warning from her dream unsettling her deeply. The next morning, Odira arrived at Anyangu's home, ready to set out for the journey. Good morning, Anyangu. Are you ready? Odira greeted. Anyangu, still feeling sick from the warning in her dream, replied weakly. I'm not feeling well. I can't go with you today. Odira was surprised. But you agreed yesterday. Are you sure you can't come? We were supposed to leave today. I just can't. I'm sorry, Odira. Odira tried to convince her. Come on. It will be fun. You will feel better once we are on the way. But Anyangu was firm. I really can't. I need to rest and take care of myself. Disappointed Odira left. Unable to persuade Ayangu to change her mind, the plan to harm Ayangu seemed to have hit a roadblock. As Ayangu's sudden illness and refusal to accompany Odira disrupted the carefully laid scheme, the village remained on the edge of a dreadful turn of events as the mysterious warning from the dream cast a shadow over the fate that had nearly befallen Ayangu. Disappointed that their initial plan failed, Odira and the women, led by Enyine, devised a new scheme. This time, they plotted to poison Ayangu. Enyine, a woman in her forties and the leader of the group, came up with the idea to prepare poisoned food and instructed Odira to offer it to Ayangu, who was still feeling unwell. Odira was given the poisoned food and headed to Ayangu's home. She arrived to find Ayangu already eating her own meal. Ayangu, I brought you some food. You should eat this instead. It's much tastier. Ayangu, feeling a bit better that day, declined kindly. Thank you, Odira, but I already made my food. I will eat this later. Not wanting to raise suspicion, Odira hesitated but eventually left the poisoned meal and departed, unable to make Ayangu eat it. Later that evening, Ayangu went to retrieve the food Odira had brought. As she uncovered it, she noticed that the meal had turned black, a clear sign of poison. Shocked and alarmed, she immediately threw the food away, understanding the dare intent behind the offering. Ayangu's heart raced. As she realized the gravity of the situation, the darkness of the plot against her had become all too evident. She felt both relieved that she hadn't consumed the poisoned food and disturbed by the betrayal of someone she considered a friend. The night fell on a village fraught with treachery and deception, where Ayamu narrowly avoided a tragic end. A moment that unveiled the depth of malice hidden behind the facade of friendship. Ayangu, feeling the weight of the treacherous attempt against her life, chose not to confront Odira about the incident. Instead, she kept herself occupied with her work, striving to earn a living and maintain a sense of normalcy in her life. The women... Consumed by anger at Ayangu's evasion of their schemes, decided on a more drastic plan. They sought out some nefarious men in the village, intending to send them to put an end to Ayangu's life. Odira, reluctantly choosing once more, was taxed with luring Ayangu to the market square. The women planned to execute their malicious scheme in a more concealed and ruthless manner. When Odira arrived at Ayangu's house, she searched for her but found no trace of the intended victim. She called out Ayangu's name several times, frantically checking every corner of the house, yet she was nowhere to be found. Consign and fear etched on her face. Odira rushed back to the women. She's gone. I couldn't find her anywhere. Ayangu is not at her house. She reported. Her voice tinged with worry. The women, puzzled and frustrated by the unexpected turn of events, didn't know that Ayangu 
on her way of the sinister plan, was diligently working in a distant farm, far away from the village. Unknown to them, Anyangu had escaped the impending danger, unknowingly eluding the trap set for her. As the women fretted over the mysterious disappearance, Anyangu toyed away, unaware of the peril she had narrowly avoided. As the sun began its descent on the horizon, casting an orange glow over the village, the vengeful women gathered with sinister intent, ready to execute their malevolent scheme. They chose to bid their time until Ayamu returned, plotting to destroy her and her home in a fairy inferno. Ayamu, oblivious to the looming danger, arrived back in the village, fatigued from a hard day's work. Odira, with a faint smile, visited her, subtly probing. Where have you been, Anyangu? Anyangu, innocently unaware, replied, I have been walking. I'm back now. Odira's smile twisted into a wicked grin as she welcomed Anyangu, offering food. Anyangu declined, sensing something amiss. As Odira departed, Anyangu, suspicious, discreetly followed her. She watched from a hidden vantage point as Odira met with a group of women. Overhearing their malevolent conversation, their intent to set her home ablaze upon her return. Ayamu's heart raced with fear and resolve. She hurried back to her hut, gathering her most prized possessions. A rush of adrenaline pushed her to flee to the neighboring village, seeking safety from the imminent threat. Panting and alarmed, Ayamu reached the neighboring village, finding refuge as the distant glow of flames illuminated the night behind her. Her mind raced, contemplating her next move while vowing to uncover the truth behind the betrayer that had forced her into this perilous flight for survival. In the neighboring village, where Ayamu sought refuge, the villagers looked at her with sympathy and concern as she narrated the treacherous ordeal she narrowly escaped. One man in particular listened intently to her story, his expression filled with sorrow. I have lost everything. Anyang sighed, her voice laden with the weight of betrayer and survivor. The man, touched by her tail, offered. Come, let's return to your village. I will accompany you. Together, they made their way back to the village where the women, previously content with the belief that Ayamu had perished, were astonished by her return. Gasps and murmurs filled the air as they saw her alive, some even whispering that she must be a ghost. Ayamu, underrated by their shock, stood tall and resolute. I am not a ghost, she asserted, her voice steady despite the astonishment around her. Some women, rattled and unnerved, fled at the sight of her, believing her to be a spectral entity returned from the beyond. However, Anyangu remained steadfast, undisturbed by their reactions. I'm alive and I'm here, she declared, determined to confront those who had plotted against her, her resolve unshaken by their fear or disbelief. The man who escorted Anyangu to the village guided her straight to the king's palace. She recounted the malicious event that had befallen her, leaving the king visibly stunned by the story she unfolded. The king, puzzled and taken aback, inquired about Anyangu's parentage. She revealed that her mother once mentioned that her father, named Obasi, held from this village. Ayamu explained that her mother, Omalugo, fled the village while pregnant, never revealing the truth to Obasi. She continued sharing the heartbreaking news that her mother had passed away some years back and she had returned in hopes of finding her father. Shocked and astonished, the king realized the truth that had eluded him for so long. 
Anyang, I am King Obasi. He revealed his voice heavy with emotion as he disclosed his identity to his daughter, whom he had never known existed. Anyang, overwhelmed and tearful, was embraced by her newfound father. He expressed regret for being unaware of her existence and promised to make amends. As the truth unfolded, the king sought justice. The women involved in the sinister plot against Anyamu were to face severe punishment and banishment. However, Anyamu, now the princess of the kingdom, intervened, pleading for mercy and forgiveness. Moved by his daughter's compassionate nature, King Obasi agreed to spare the guilty women, allowing them a chance to learn from their mistakes. Anyamu, now at peace with the villagers, was embraced and loved by the king's wife, and the prince joyously welcomed her as his sister. The kingdom, once made by deceit and treachery, found a renowned sense of harmony and unity as Ayamu, now the cherished princess, fostered forgiveness and understanding among all. <laughs>